During Lent, my dear family, during Lent, we walk with Jesus in the desert. In the Catholic Church, we, we walk and we work with Jesus throughout every single event in his life, as narrated, as narrated by the four Gospels. We do so so that we may be able to imitate him in every way. Us walking and working with Jesus in a public setting is what we call a liturgy. We participate in Jesus' life of public service by attending a liturgy. For example, for example, we walk with Jesus at his birth by celebrating the Christmas season. We walk with Jesus during his public ministry by celebrating the ordinary time or whenever the priest wears green. We walk with Jesus also during his resurrection on the Easter season and so on with the many events we celebrate. As Catholics, at a Catholic liturgy, we walk and we work with Jesus by imitating him in everything he did and everything he underwent in his life. During Lent, during Lent we do the same. We walk and we, and we work with Jesus. But this time, this time we do it in the desert. We walk with him for 40 days and 40 nights. We do so to prepare ourselves. We do so to overcome sin and temptation. We do so to repent and believe in the gospel. During Lent, during Lent we will share in the same sufferings that Jesus underwent. We will share in his same temptations. Yes, he was tempted. But he never fell into temptation, and we are also called to never fall into temptation. He always rejected temptation. We are too called to reject temptation, to imitate him in every way, to walk and work with him in a liturgy. During Lent, our own sufferings, our own struggles, and our own time is the same of the same time of that of Jesus in the desert because we walk with him and we work with him and we try to imitate him during lent my dear family let us strengthen this bond let us grow closer with Christ as we walk with him and let us repent and believe in the gospel but the question remains how do we do that how do we grow in that bond as we walk with him? We do so, for example, by asking the following questions to ourselves. We examine our own conscience. Do we treat people, events, or things as more important than God? Have we, in any words that we say and speak, actively or passively put down God, the church, or others? Do we go to church every weekend? Do I respect, love, and communicate properly with family members? Have I ever harmed someone willingly, either physically, verbally, emotionally, psychologically, or manipulated someone for my own sake? Have we respected the dignity of our own bodies, physically and sexually, either with others, online, or alone? Have we taken or wasted or misused what belongs to others? Do we gossip, lie, deceive, exaggerate stories so that we may look better or talk behind people's back behind behind people's backs if you are married have you honored the love that exists between the two of you 
with full affection and exclusive love? Are we happy with what God has given us or do we constantly complain for what he has not given us? These, my dear family, are just general guides. They serve like a GPS to guide us through our own desert. We call these the Ten Commandments and they're just placed in a question form. They, help, they helped the Israelites get out of their own desert. They were lost for 40 years after they fell into their own temptations. And then Moses was given the Ten Commandments to help them out of their desert. The commandments help us find direction. They help us repent. They help us believe in the gospel. They, of course, do not list every single sin to ever exist, but they give us a general sense of guidance, a general sense of direction. They prepare us to take the many rights and lefts that the desert will throw at us. Let us then, my dear family, remember that we are called to repent and believe in the gospel. Life is short. We are dust, and unto dust we shall all soon return. And if we want to change, repent, and believe in the good news, we shall do it now.